It's rare that you get a story that uh, both challenges you intellectually and morally and also truly entertains you. We were very lucky to have Gigi Pritzker come to us. Really, this started when her nephew read the book and said, and Gigi, you got to read this. Many years ago, my nephew was in seventh grade, and he came to me and said, I've read this book that's extraordinary. And what was fascinating was he's a kid who didn't read books, and he had a hard time reading books. So I felt like any book that he really cared about must be really interesting. So I read it immediately and was amazed and thought it was fantastic. Uh, and he said to me, wouldn't it make a great movie? And that was the beginning of the journey. That kid is now studying for his PhD at Oxford and is 28 years old and expecting his first kid. She got the rights and decided to try and make a movie, an impossible task that others had failed to do. I think one of the reasons the film has taken a while to come to the screen is because it needed, it needed for visual effects and stunts um, to be able to reach a point where they could marry in a really realistic way. We often get the question, what did you do to adapt it for today? And the answer is, we just shot with the ideas that were in the book because it was already ahead of its time and we just caught up. So they've been trying to adapt Ender's Game for 20 years and it's gone through many different writers and many different directors. And it is really challenging because how do you convey so many of the great ideas in the book and ultimately distill it down to two hours? I pitched a take on it, not knowing any of the history of the struggle to get this thing made. And they liked what I said and they hired me. And then I really had to sit down and think, how am I really going to do this? The material is appealing to all ages because it deals with some pretty universal themes. The humanity and reality of the emotional relationship, it's an opportunity in which to reach the audience uh, on an understanding and emotional level. Action. It's one of the few books that got the Hugo and the Nebula Awards essentially a sci-fi classic. If you are a student of sci-fi and action adventure of that type, this book is, uh, is on the list of many people's top 10. As soon as I mentioned it to people, they were like, end this game, go in, end this book. This is a hugely popular book worldwide. Anybody who read books as a child and was mildly interested in fantasy or sci-fi has read end this game. Gigi Pritzker, some years ago, she tracked me down. Uh, Bob Chardoff and myself had the, the rights, and she tracked us down and said that she would like to get involved and try to make it happen. I've worked at the company 10 years, and we did an annual checkup on the availability of the rights. And about four years ago, we called and found out that they were set to expire at Warner Brothers within that year, and we started courting the author. Then Digital Domain was next in getting involved. Uh, there were many people at the company who adored Ender's Game, which happens a lot in the visual effects world. Um, and so they got involved in a very substantial way. Not just we'll do the visual effects, but also a co-financier, which is a big deal. What I wanted more than anything was to be really true to the spirit of Ender's Game, the book. It deals with some pretty universal themes that people of all ages grapple with, think about. Ideas about leadership and the way games and reality are starting to blend as concepts. And it's set in an environment that's interesting and exciting. It's surprisingly prescient about conditions and situations that exist in the world today. Very substantial issues. It's incredible that in 1985, this book talked about all these things, and we're very much living with these themes and ideas today. I was struck by a piece of material that really treated young people. Um, in an intelligent way and didn't speak down to them and understood what it was like to feel isolated, to feel like you were on the outside, to feel like the world was maybe a scary place. Every human is capable for extreme passion and selflessness. 
and also everyone's capable of violence and malevolence and sort of cold-heartedness. So much popular entertainment takes this very simplistic paradigm of good versus evil and something bad happens to a good person and then they spend the next two hours setting the world back to right and they are good and the evil guy's got to be punished. And actually that's kind of a dangerous philosophy because it's never asking you whether you yourself have the capacity for evil or violence or doing something not good. And so for a book that's aimed at a mass audience to really deal with those ideas in a young protagonist where young people who are in those years where their, their ideas are most being formed will come have a great time seeing a big spectacle but also have the opportunity to debate the themes and ideas raised by the book. It's not a confection, it's not a concoction, it's actually rooted in the truth of patterns of human behavior. To what extent am I capable of acts of aggression? And to what extent am I capable of great kindness? And we as a human species are capable of both.